Hello and welcome to episode 19 of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we are going to take a look at overtaking techniques and how to basically perform a decent overtaking manoeuvre. You'll more than likely need to do it at some point in your race in order for you to win unless you're starting in P1. So generally overtaking is pretty crucial when it comes to racecraft and being successful in racing. Now, one of the key components for making a successful overtake is your timing. That is in both kind of a more general sense and kind of the bigger picture. Is it the right point in the race to actually make this overtake? Weighing up the whole risk versus reward and whether actually trying to attempt to overtake the person in front of you is actually going to be beneficial in the next couple of corners or whether it could be potentially detrimental to your race and have a bigger negative impact especially if you don't actually perform and manage to complete the overtake. The other part of the whole timing thing is the actual stages of the overtake itself so getting on the brakes at the right time being in the right position alongside the car to actually perform and complete that overtake and make it cleanly. So when it comes to the whole risk versus reward thing basically what you want to be asking yourself is is this overtaking opportunity that may potentially be coming up actually worth taking or would it be better to actually sit behind that person through the corner and wait for another opportunity later in the race. Obviously in the shorter sprint races you're going to have a lot less time to actually perform those overtaking maneuvers and if you're starting further down the field then obviously you need to be a little bit more snappy with those decisions and also try and take more of those overtaking opportunities rather than sitting and being patient like you would in a longer endurance race where you've got a lot more time so you can afford to be patient and sit behind the person follow them a little bit and try to gauge and read where their strengths and weaknesses are and pick out an overtaking opportunity from that so what i want to demonstrate with this clip here is essentially the time that people lose when they try and overtake uh, other players and basically get into battling situations with other drivers so this is a, a league race and we're doing our own manual rolling starts that we do here. Obviously we're at Dubai. This is me that we're following currently and I just kind of want you to ignore basically what I do here at the start and basically look at the cars further up ahead beyond the M6 here and basically up at the Audi R8 that's in front of us. Now obviously the first lap all the cars are very very closely bunched, bunched together so people are kind of fighting for that little bit of uh, tarmac and those gaps that they can possibly go for. Generally what I'm trying to do here is be relatively cautious. I don't want to be too overly aggressive and basically just pick off any positions that I can potentially gain. We've now got a spinner in front of us, in front of us with this BMW that we've just passed there. There's a little bit of lag there that I had on my end as this is a uh, online race. But if you look at in front of us, we've got a situation where there's cars going three wide into the next braking zone. Now... Looking just beyond that at the Audi R8 just in front of us, the Ferrari 488 and that Lambo, if you start to look beyond those three cars, you can see a gap starting to develop to the rest of the pack in front of us. Now obviously these guys are fighting for position, they're going side by side through multiple corners, they're trying to perform various overtakes and switchbacks on each other and when you're doing that obviously you're having to compromise your own line, you're therefore going slower than you would under basically normal clear conditions and open air when there's no one else around you and what we're doing is actually losing a lot of time to the rest of the pack and as we come towards the end of the lap here the driver in 15th is actually the person who's leading this gaggle of cars that we're in here and then p14 is the driver who's at the tail end of the pack in front and as we come onto the start finish straight if i actually pause it at this point here you can see the gap difference between P14 and P15 is pretty much two seconds. So within a lap, because drivers are battling and going side by side and trying to perform various overtakes on each other, we're losing an awful lot of time to the drivers in front of us. And that's putting us at quite a big disadvantage once things settle down, because obviously you now got a lot of work to do in order to actually try and make that time back up. So here's another example, but in a racing situation, we're following uh, a driver in a Ferrari 488, and you can see there's a BMW M6 GT3 and a, another 488 further up the road in front of us. Now, coming to the end of this lap, you can see there's a relatively decent gap between uh, the car that we're following here 
and the two guys in front. But as they actually start battling and fighting for position, and the M6 is trying to overtake that Ferrari, you'll see just how much time that they lose in this battle, and the Ferrari that we're following here will close up in half a lap. So there was a tiny little bit of contact between the two drivers coming into turn two there, and that hairpin, so the BMW settled back down and settled in behind him. He's now gone for a nice switchback maneuver into turn three and has got the inside for turn four. But where they're side by side and they're basically having to compromise uh, for each other to avoid making contact because they're trying to perform good, clean, fair racing, they're losing a lot of time. And the 488 that was behind by a good second or so has now closed right up within half a lap to be just a few car lengths behind the battling pair in front of us. And now, as you can see, one of them has had to give up the position and the 488 that we're following is now right up underneath the rear wing of the 488 in front. So getting your timing right is going to be critical to make sure that you don't actually lose ground to any of the other drivers around you. So let's take a look at various overtaking maneuvers that you can actually perform and getting good positioning in order to make overtaking maneuvers actually happen. So the first example we're going to take a look at is a overtaking maneuver down the inside of an opponent and generally this would be the main way that you will make overtaking maneuvers on other drivers and generally what you want to be doing is making these overtaking maneuvers in very very slow corners generally in heavy braking zones usually at the end of a long straight. In this particular example we are going to be passing the McLaren 650S GT3 car up in front of us, we're in the BMW M6 GT3 here, and we're going to be actually making the overtaking maneuver into turn two, the main hairpin at Laguna Seca. Now, we're actually about half the length of the circuit away from that point at the moment. We're on the other side and we're on the run up the hill towards uh, the up towards the corkscrew. But if I play this clip out, and as we basically come up through to the corkscrew you can see that I'm a few car lengths back but actually the McLaren in front of us uh, makes a slight mistake and gets a little bit loose coming down the other side of the corkscrew which allows us to close the gap and get right up alongside the McLaren here now I'm not going to be able to make the overtaking maneuver down the outside there so at this point what I want to do is settle in to the slipstream of the car in front focus on getting a good exit out of the final corner here to try and give me good drive coming up the hill through the run of turn one and into the braking zone of turn two. So we're now on the start finish straight, as you can see, very nicely put in the slipstream or position the car in the slipstream of the 650S in front of us. We got a decent run coming out of the final turn. And as you'll see, as we play this clip out, I'm going to uh, play this in slow motion. You can see I'm starting to position my car a little bit more to the left. You can see we've got a good tow and a good slipstream off the car in front. But as we come through turn one just there, you can already see I'm starting to position my car to the left of the 650S in front of us. And we're going to try and go down the inside of him into this braking zone here. Now you can see from the positioning of his car, he's planning on following the racing line at the moment. And even though I'm looking to the left a little bit to look to go to his inside, he's not looking overly defensive at the, at the moment. And as we continue into the braking zone, we just both just jumped onto the brakes at this point here. Now, one of the key things of making a good successful overtake is actually making sure that you actually nail your braking point and get the car slowed down for the apex to perform a good clean overtake. Now, if we keep the uh, the clip paused here at this moment, we've literally just jumped on the brakes. And as you can see, he's got his car positioned rather nicely on the racing line on the right hand side of the circuit there. And I've got my car positioned in a very good ideal spot to try and make a maneuver down the inside. Now, the good thing about my positioning here is where he's on the racing line, I'm able to basically try and stay close to him, but obviously pass cleanly down his inside, but also keep the corner relatively open for myself so I don't have to bleed off too much speed in order to actually make the apex. If my car is situated further over to the left, over on the left-hand side of the circuit, 
I'll be making the overtaking manoeuvre very, very difficult for myself. I'd have to bleed more speed to get the car slowed down and turned in and stayed tight in towards the apex. If he's going to give me room on the inside to try and make the overtake, obviously I'm going to need to slow the car down even more in order to avoid making contact with him. And that will give him a better opportunity to stay around the outside, maintain his speed and momentum and actually uh, hold the position that he's currently defending. Now, where he's not being overly defensive, obviously he's there on the right-hand side on the racing line, I'm able to open up the corner for myself here. And as we continue to play the clip through, you can see as we come in towards the apex, I'm going and turning in for the apex now, I'm bleeding off the speed as he is as well, and we're now pretty much side by side. I've got the car nicely slowed down, so it's all just about maintaining car control. He's given me plenty of room there on the inside. Obviously, where this is a double... Uh, a double hairpin as it were there's kind of two parts to the corner where there's basically two apexes being on the inside has an additional benefit where i'm taking the shorter route through the corner and i'm therefore more likely to make the overtaking maneuver successful down the inside than i would be around the outside if i was to try and make the overtaking maneuver around the outside i would have to try and carry an awful lot of speed and momentum uh, around the outside of the opponent and also try and squeeze him on the inside to kind of make him concede a little bit and kind of half back out and slow his speed on the inside in order to try and avoid making contact. But where I'm on the inside, I'm in basically the prime perfect opportunity or position to complete this overtaking maneuver where I've made the first apex cleanly. There's been no contact between the two of us. He's given us plenty of room. Good fair racing by the 650S driver. Obviously making the sec second apex here. So it's just a case of getting a good decent exit. And coming out the exit of the corner here. If we jump to the driver that we've just overtaken. You can see he's still on the outside. He's using the full width of the, trick, uh, full width of the track as he should be. I've gone and left him a car's width on the exit of the corner, which you should be doing as well in order to minimize the potential of making contact with the driver that you are performing the overtake on. And as you can see, our car is ahead of the driver here. And as we continue to play the clip through, we basically we complete the overtake maneuver here by kind of half squeezing him a little bit into turn three there. And basically, kind of half shutting the door on him and preventing him from going up the inside. There was the room, however, he wasn't on the right line to make that uh, try and come back at me and try and uh, regain the position. And I was therefore able to actually hold uh, the, the position that I've just gained through that overtake down the inside. So if we look at this again, coming from the final turn here and play this out in full speed, obviously, Getting a good exit off the corner prior to it was pretty key. I do get a good drive off. We've got the slipstream of the McLaren in front of us. And as you can see, I want to try and switch up underneath him where he's not going defensive. I'm able to hold a wider line coming into here as well. I'm not having to bleed off as much speed as if I stayed over to the far left and made it really tight for myself. And where he gave me the room, I was able to complete the overtake maneuver quite successfully. I gave him room here on the inside just in case he was going to take it, but he decided to back out and slot and behind. So that's a good example of a nice clean overtake there down the inside. And now we're going to take a look at a second example of overtaking down the inside. However, this time the driver that I was trying to make the overtake maneuver on was aiming to basically make it as difficult for me to complete the pass as it possibly could have been. He was very, very aggressive in his defensive driving. He was still fair and there was minimal, if any, contact at all when I was trying to pass him down the inside. Uh, but it was good, fair, respectable driving by both of us. But he did make it very, very tough for me to complete the manoeuvre. And in some situations, and probably in this situation, if it was in a online lobby environment, I probably would have backed out of the manoeuvre uh, altogether. Fortunately, in this case, we're in a league racing environment. So I trust the guys who I'm racing with. They're all very highly skilled. We all respect each other and we'll give each other racing room. But he did make it as very as difficult as it possibly could be for me to actually complete uh, complete the maneuver. So continuing to play the clip out, get a decent traction, decent run off, 
duck into the slipstream of the Red 488. That was just about enough to get us up alongside, to get my front wheel up alongside his rear wheel. And obviously, I'm on the outside, but coming down towards the next braking zone for turn four, I'm alongside the Ferrari, as you can see there. There's a little bit of an overlap. There's not a huge amount, but as we come and continue to play this clip out, what you actually see is this red Ferrari that is alongside alongside us here is going to move over to the left and squeeze us over onto the left hand side of the circuit. Now coming into this point here, if we jump back to the chase cam, we're pretty much coming right up to the breaking point. The breaking point is, is between the bridge that's here in front of us and the location of where the, our two cars are currently situated at the moment. As you can see, I am in a completely different scenario to our previous example where I had a lot of room on my inside. The driver who I was trying to maneuver was on the racing line and he was giving me plenty of room on the inside. Stark contrast here, I'm as near enough as far left as I can be and the driver who I'm trying to overtake is situated in the middle of the track and trying to make the, the apex and my turning point for this next corner as tight and as slow as it possibly can be in order for him to try and stay on my outside and be on the inside for the second part of the chicane for him to try and uh, maintain the position that uh, that we're in. Now, this overtake is being made even more difficult by the fact that we have the Ginetta there on the right-hand side on the racing line, literally right in front of us as well, pretty much within a car length, as you can see. Now, if he wasn't there, it wouldn't be too bad. It'd obviously still be really quite tight, the approach coming into the next corner. But the fact that he is there and on the racing line, obviously he's going to be wary that us two are side by side and potentially coming down his inside. So that's two cars that all three of us are basically having to worry about in this scenario and keep tabs on as to where they are located. Also, if I don't actually get up alongside this Ginetta in front of us, he is going to be planning on actually making the apex of the left-hander and obviously it will be coming across mine and also the Ferrari's nose. Now, if we jump back to the chase cam real quick and we'll continue to play this clip out a little bit, you'll see kind of frame by frame. At this point, I'm getting on the brakes to make sure that I'm now my braking point and I'm going to be slow enough for the apex of the corner in front. In front of us, both, or shall I say alongside us, neither the Ferrari nor the Ginetta have actually got on the brakes yet. The Ginetta is very, very good on its brakes. It can get on the brakes very late. The Ferrari is also good on its brakes, probably not as good, quite as good as the Ginetta, but it's better than the BMW. The BMW isn't too great on its brakes, so I do have to brake a little bit late, earlier anyway. But as we continue to play this out, now he's jumping on the brakes. Now the Ginetta is jumping on the brakes. And at this point here, I'm kind of committed to actually making the overtake happen. As you can see, I'm still very, very far to the left. That's not really ideal. And in th at this point, it's kind of in a league race, I'd be heavily considering actually maintaining on a, uh, staying on the brakes, going into the apex and basically slowing down as much as possible and trying to back out of the maneuver. It's very, very high risk at this point, but obviously where it's in a league environment, I can afford to be a little bit more risky and kind of rely on the guys around me to actually give me racing room. Now continuing to play this clip out as we are continuing to slow down, you can see I'm pulling up further alongside the Ferrari in front of us and the Ferrari is actually starting to move over back towards the right hand side of the circuit back onto the racing line. What he is going to be planning to do at this stage is obviously where he's forced me really tight to the apex. I'm going to be very, very slow on this first apex going to the left and where I'm going to be slow and trying to hug it as tight as possible with him there on my outside. He's going to want to try and carry the speed and momentum that he needs to hold it around the outside of me through this first apex and be on the inside for the second part. And obviously we need to give each other both racing room and in order for him to give himself greater success for that he needs to open up the corner as much as possible for himself so he's actually moving over back onto the racing line behind the Ginetta whereas I'm forced to still take this narrow line down the inside now 
I've started moving right a little bit, as you can see, or as much as I possibly can afford to do so, in order to try and open up the apex for myself a little bit. And at this point, I am eking ahead of the Ferrari in front of us. So if we quickly pop over to him, you can see we are there on the left-hand side with the glowing brake discs. The Ginetta is directly in front. And if I hop back to myself, we're pretty much there alongside. But what I've now got to worry about is this Ginetta directly in front of us. And I've got to continue to hold the brakes as the Ginetta is actually starting to turn in. Obviously, he's recognized that neither of us are far, far enough up alongside him in order to actually make an overtaking maneuver actually happen. He started to turn in towards the apex of the corner, whereas I'm still very much on the brakes. If we jump back to myself, you can see I'm still on the brakes at the moment. The Ferrari is also still on the brakes. And as we continue to play this clip through, obviously, I am pretty much got the move done on the Ferrari. I'm there up his inside. He's not there far enough alongside. And myself and Eginetta come very, very, very close to making contact. Now, at this point, I'm actually coming into the peripheral vision of the driver driving in the cockpit view. You may have just be able to see that I'm there on the inside and he's gotten on the brakes. Obviously, it's quite difficult to actually see. In this case, if I play this or rewind the clip a little bit and then hide it again, Obviously, in his cockpit view, he'll be able to see that I'm coming down the inside out the corner of his, corner of his eyes. You can see it through the uh, through the side window there, just about. And you can see my car actually coming into view as well. You can see the, the glowing brake discs. And he actually straightens up on the steering wheel a little bit, as you can see here. There it goes. It goes back straight and actually turns out a tiny little bit as well. And at this point, he's also on the brakes to avoid making contact with myself because I'm there on the inside. And as we continue to play the clip through, he actually slots in behind me. He recognized that there wasn't really a chance uh, for him to hang it around the outside as I was still carrying a little bit too much speed and momentum for us both to go side by side coming into this next bit. And as you can see, I've managed to get the car slowed down enough to be able to make the next corner quite nicely as well. Obviously, didn't nail the apex anywhere near as well as the Ferrari did. So my exit is going to be compromised a little bit coming out of here. But the good thing is we all gave each other racing room. There was no contact between any of the drivers in this situation. And if I actually go back and play this at full speed as well, you will see just how close things got between all of us. So he squeezed me over to the left-hand side. I had to move over to the left. It's very, very tight for myself. On the brakes, narrowly avoiding making contact with the Ginetta and able to make that overtaking maneuver happen. But obviously, it's very, very high risk. Obviously, if the Ginetta wasn't there, the overtake probably would have been a little bit easier. We wouldn't have to worry so much about him being there and just the tightness of the corner. But in those kind of situations, again, it's very, very important that you make sure that you get your braking point nailed and you get the car slowed down for the apex and you avoid making contact. In that kind of situation, if I did make contact with the guy on the outside, both of us probably would have ended up spinning, sustaining damage, and that could have potentially have ruined our races. So it's important that you get these overtakes done cleanly and done fairly. Give each other racing room. Try and minimize the risk of making contact with the driver that you're overtaking, and that will give you greater chance of success. So here we go then with a look at a overtaking maneuver around the outside of an opponent. Now, these generally tend to be very, very difficult to pull off. And generally, I wouldn't advise going for a overtake around the outside unless there is a corner that follows very, very closely uh, to the corner that you're going around the outside where you'll be on the inside for that next turn. Now, in this example, we are chasing down the BMW M6 that is directly in front of us. And if we play the clip out, the overtake kind of starts from back here in the Maggots Beckett section of Silverstone. Getting a good run through here and getting a good drive coming out of the final part of Beckett's here. And coming through Chapel and getting a good slipstream down the hangar straight that we're now on. Gives us a good opportunity to try and 
potentially make an overtaking maneuver coming down here into Stow and getting very, very close. In this instance, I wasn't close enough to go for it, so instead, stayed in behind, took the racing line, and then we come in and get in a good drive coming out of Stow and then down into the approach for Vale. Now, in this situation, as you can see, I am very, very close to the back of the rear bumper of the M6 that is directly in front of us. And if we play the clip out just a tiny little bit, move it forward slightly, he's actually gone and gone defensive and moved over to the left to cover the inside line and prevent me from going down the inside into this next braking zone. As you can see, I'm still sat on the racing line. I still aim to take that. And this gives me an opportunity to try and go around the outside of him through Vale, which is the left, and then into the right of club that immediately follows. And then this is one of those corners where it's a it's a pretty good opportunity to try and go around the outside of someone if they are being defensive coming into the braking zone. Now, obviously, he's, he's positioned his car very, very nicely. I'm going to go ahead where he's defending that inside line, stay over on the racing line, which is over here on the right-hand side, and you can see a nice big gap opens up between myself and the M6 that's over there on our left. As you can see, you could probably fit another car between the two of us. Now, we'll stay with the chase cam here. We're basically we're coming right into the breaking point, and in this kind of situation, what I want to be doing is give him a car's width of room on the apex of this left-hander, but maintain some speed and some momentum to hold it around the outside and be alongside so that he has to give up the apex for the right-hander. So in this instance, I can afford to break a little bit later than my usual breaking point. Obviously, I still want to bleed off enough speed to actually make the corner itself, but I need to do so uh, to make sure that I get alongside him. So coming into the braking zone, we've pretty much got on the brakes, so pretty much exactly the same same point. He's ever so slightly ahead of myself here in this case, and as you can see, I'm staying well over to the right-hand side of the track on the racing line right up against the kerb. He's over there on the left-hand side being quite defensive. There's plenty of room between myself and him in this instance, but he was probably expecting me to follow him and try and go down the inside. So he's just being he's being defensive, but in this case, what he's going to need to do in order to actually make the apex is bleed off a little bit more speed and try and avoid running deep and there uh, potentially being uh, contact between us two where I am on his outside. Now, as we continue to play this out, I'm going to basically turn in at my usual turning point. However, what I'm going to do this time is actually turn in a little bit shallower in order to give the racing room on the apex. And as you can see, the gap between us is actually closing. He's got his car slowed down quite nicely and is going to be able to make the apex perfectly fine. He is off the brakes in this point. I just wanted to double check because his uh, he had his, his headlights on so it could be quite difficult to actually tell whether he's got his brakes still on at this point. The main way you can tell is the central brake light here is off at the moment. So jumping back to myself, obviously in this situation here we are directly side by side. I'm on the outside, I'm very nicely alongside him and I've got the speed and the momentum that I need to continue around the outside. Now He's obviously recognised that I'm still there on his outside. So instead of him continuing to track out to the right-hand side where the BMW that's ahead of us is currently situated, what he's going to have to do is compromise his exit a little bit in order to give me racing room on the outside where I am currently situated. And that is the space that I want to be occupying. So continuing on through the corner, as you can see, the BMW M6 in front of us is pretty much bang on the racing line and as we continue as we go out through I'm now basically in a situation where I'm ever so slightly ahead I've carried that little bit more speed and a little bit more momentum through the corner he's obviously recognized that I'm there on the outside and has had to compromise his line because of that and it was therefore a little bit slower in this situation obviously I'm a little bit ahead I've now got the inside for the next corner that follows which is going to allow me to complete the overtaking maneuver. The only way that he can come back at me here is either A, he gives a really good 
uh, squirt of the throttle and it gets good traction and is able to get the momentum to come back at me. However, there's another right-hander that follows after this. There's a second part to club that goes back onto the start-finish straight. So even if he was to get onto the outside there, he'll still be at a disadvantage on the outside for the next part. Or his other alternative is to slow a little bit and try and switch back on me and come back underneath for the second part of the right-hander. Now, coming in, as we continue to play the clip out, you can see that he's maintaining his line. He's pretty much straight. I'm now pretty much straight. And we're going to come into the apex of the next turn. Obviously, I've turned in. He's given me plenty of racing room. I gave him plenty of racing room on the previous corner. I'm going to take the apex, as I usually do, quite nicely. And I'm able to carry, in this instance, carry the speed through the corner. If we hop to the driver, he's now just lost the position. He's not in any real place to try and hang it around the outside he's losing this fight currently at the moment he doesn't have the speed to hang it around the outside and is instead going to tuck in underneath me and I've gone and taken that position now he it, it's a little bit of a difficult corner to switch back on in this instance because you don't really touch the brakes a little bit so he would have had to have done the maneuver quite early instead what he tried to do is try and maintain his line and hope that I wasn't able to maintain the momentum around the outside of him to be on the inside for the next corner so it's a little bit unfortunate for him in that instance but he could have tried to open himself up potentially a little bit more to try and switch back on me but where I had that good line and a good run through it would have been very very difficult to come back underneath so in this in this case what he did with settling in behind would have been the right option as that then basically gives him the slipstream as we continue out through these next sequence of turns and potentially be presented with an opportunity for overtaking me and coming back at me at a later point. So we're going to take one final look at a last example of an overtake around the outside and it's going to be on this SLS in front of us and again it's going to be in a corner where there's a another corner that immediately follows after the one that I'm going around the outside of my opponent. So we're going into the bus stop chicane is where we're going to be making this overtake happen. Now we have just come out of Stavolo and we are now accelerating down the back straight. Just playing this clip out and obviously picking up good slipstream as we're coming on the run down to Blanchemont. Now at this point I'm not really in any position to obviously try and make an overtaking maneuver down through Blanchemont and it's quite a very high risk, high speed area and generally you can't go side by side through there anyway, uh, not not without it quite heavily potentially resulting in tears. So basically what I'm aiming for is a good run through this corner, try and carry as much speed as possible and try and carry the momentum that I've got from the slipstream of the car in front. Now, coming out through the exit, as you can see, we have got good momentum on the car in front, and the car in front is hanging to the right-hand side to defend the inside line coming into the braking zone of the bus stop chicane. So I'm forced to go to his outside. In this case, he's moving right over to the right-hand side, and then he's looking to kind of open the corner up for himself once again. So I am going to continue to take the racing line, as we come into the braking zone, we both get on the brakes at pretty much exactly the same spot. And then I'm aiming and basically sitting on the racing line at this point. He is just there to my right hand side. And like we did in the last overtake, basically what I'm looking to do is carry that little bit of extra speed coming into the first apex to basically continue the momentum around his outside and be there on the inside for the second part of the chicane, which is a left hander that follows. Now, the one thing that's different with this clip is I was pretty much bang alongside when we got onto the braking zone and as we continue through the braking zone as you can see here I'm actually starting to eke out a tiny little bit ahead. We come very 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 close to making contact there as you can see our wheels are pretty much rubbing as we come in to the braking zone here. Fortunately there is no contact or there is very minimal contact between the two of us and as we continue out at this point you can see I'm already ahead. However, I do still want to give him racing room at this point. If I continue or if I go ahead and start to turn in towards the actual apex and the inside curb of this corner, I run quite a high risk of him going into the back of me, giving me a punt, which will 
99% of the time put me into a spin. So I want to give him racing room there on the inside. If we actually switch drivers real quick, you can see I'm now actually quite far ahead of him by probably about a quarter of a car length. We're both continuing on the brakes at this point. I come off the brakes to neutralize the car as I'm turning in. He's going to come off the brakes as well, or he should come off the brakes as we come into the apex. However, because I am there on his outside, it's obviously quite clear he's worried about potentially running into the back of me and is therefore continuing to hold the brake through the corner, which has given me even more of an advantage. At this point, the overtake is pretty much done and dusted. I've done enough to get ahead. You can quite clearly see that I am ahead and I'm in the prime position to take the apex for the next next corner as well. Whereas he, although he's on the inside for this corner, and may come back at me slightly, he's on the outside for the next right-hander. So continuing through, he's now off the brakes, but I'm quite clearly ahead. I'm able to go in and just take the apex of the next turn. And he comes in and obviously where I was there on his inside, he wasn't quite able to make the apex himself. And I was there able to make that move nice and cleanly directly around his outside. So if we play this uh, pretty much full speed, I play it from the perspective of the SLS. So playing it, you can see it come very, very close picking up the slipstream, I've got the momentum, I'm there on his outside, both break at pretty much the same point, but I've got that momentum to go around the outside of him, give him racing room there on the inside, the move's pretty much done and dusted by the time we get to that second apex, and I've gone and gained that position, so that is generally how you overtake around the outside, is by carrying that extra little bit of momentum over the driver that you're planning on overtaking. When it comes to positioning, obviously you want to set yourself up in a position where you can cleanly pass the other driver, carry as much speed and momentum through the apex, that's both for the inside and also the outside, but obviously if you're on the inside and they're there on your outside, you need to make sure that you get the car slowed down enough to hold the tight line through the corner and avoid risking making contact with the other driver, and it's it's basically, it's all about being precise. Obviously, nailing your braking point, making sure you get the car slowed down, and making sure you give yourself the, get yourself the apex, or if you're on the outside, making sure that you get alongside far enough to try and complete the maneuver into the next corner, or get a good drive coming off the exit. So, positioning and timing is very, very key when it comes to overtaking. We'll do another episode taking a look at a couple of other maneuvers that you can do, such as the switchback maneuver uh, in hairpins and things like that. There's also, obviously, uh, overtaking when it comes to maximizing uh, your potential of making an overtake due to other people's battles or mistakes, and then also actually overtaking when it comes to lap traffic and also multi class racing as well. We'll probably cover those in a separate episode, as this one has been quite long, just going through the general basics of overtaking on both the inside and on the outside. So, hopefully, you learned something from this video, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, share the wealth and knowledge with your friends and fellow racers. Very much appreciate with the support that you guys have been giving me, and hopefully, we can continue going on into the future and hopefully you'll be able to make some good overtakes on your fellow race drivers and have fun with some good battles out there with your fellow racers. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching the episode, guys. Hopefully I shall catch you soon. But in the meantime, take care.